Today we're going to be correcting skin tone using a couple of images. Typically, this type of repair is needed when we encounter things like tan lines, unevenly applied makeup, or perhaps lighting that's affecting skin tone in a negative way. To begin with, let's consider this image. Let's zoom in to see more detail. The bridesmaid has some tan lines here and also in this area. Just like many other things in Photoshop, there are typically a number of ways to do things, some better than others. We're going to use the Curves Adjustment Layers to make our corrections. If I don't see the Adjustments panel on the screen, I can make it visible and add it to my current workspace by going to the Windows menu and choosing Adjustments. The panel will then appear on the screen. I could then click on the Curves icon here to add a Curves layer. I could also find this partially filled circle icon and click it to choose a new adjustment layer, in this case a Curves layer. I'll use the Adjustment panel and click on the Curves icon. Two things happen. The Curves Properties panel pops up and a Curves layer is added in the Layers panel. Notice that the mask in the new layer has a broken square outline around it. It means that the mask is currently selected in this layer. The first thing that we want to do is click on the Curves icon in the Adjustment layer. You'll see that the broken square outline has shifted from the mask to the icon. Then we double click on the white point sampling icon in the Curves properties. The Color Picker dialog will appear. If it's overlapping the area of interest in the image, just drag it to a more convenient spot. We'll click on an area of skin where the tone is pleasing and then click the OK button in the Color Picker dialog to accept it. The dialog box goes away and a small query box appears asking us to save the target colors as defaults. We'll click Yes to this. Notice that the cursor is still an eyedropper. Now we'll click on a sample of skin whose tone we want to change. If you've done everything correctly up to this point, you should see the color of the entire image change. In this case, the image has taken on a darker color cast. Next, we'll click on the Curve Layers Mask to select it, and then press Ctrl-I, Command-I on a Mac, to invert the mask. The mask turns from white to black, and the image returns to normal with no color cast showing. Now we're going to brush in the color change that we created using the Curves layer. Press the D key to reset the default colors for the brush to black and white. Then we'll press the B key, or click on the brush icon here, to select the brush tool. We'll see the cursor change to a circle or possibly some other shape. The brush options appear up here, just below the main menu. We want a medium-sized soft brush for this, so let's check our brush settings. We can change the brush's hardness here. Set the slider to its minimum value. We can then set the size of the brush here, or we can use the square bracket keys to set the brush size. Next, I'm going to change the opacity and flow of the brush so that we gradually apply the new color to the image. I'll set the opacity to about 40% and the flow to about 25%. And finally, we want to ensure we're painting the mask with a white brush. I'll start brushing the effect in. When we're done, we can blur the mask a bit to make the transition between the source and target skin colors a little smoother. With the mask selected, go to Filter, then Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. We'll set the radius to give us a nice transition. The values you choose might be different than mine, as the right value depends on the resolution of the image you're working on. Larger resolution files need larger radius values. Okay, that's looking great. We'll go through the procedure again for the tan lines on the other side. Once again, we'll start with a new Curves layer, then switch from the selected mask to the Curves icon in this new layer. Then double-click on the white point sampler icon in the Curves properties. We'll choose the skin tone we like and press OK in the Color Picker dialog. Then we'll click on the skin area that we want to fix. A color cast appears. We'll then select the mask icon in the new layer and using Control i Command-I on a Mac, we'll invert the mask. Now we'll brush the color in by painting the mask with a white soft brush.
If we overbrush an area, we can always brush some color out. Press the X key to flip our brush color from white to black and brush out some of the offending area. Finally, let's add some blur to our mask by applying a Gaussian blur. I'll select the two adjustment layers and press Ctrl G, Command G on a Mac, to create a group and call the group Skin Correction. Now we can toggle the group on and off to see the before and after. I'll switch to another image and we'll make some skin corrections here. We need to fix the top of the chest area and also I'd like to get some of the original skin color back on the forehead where glare has lightened the skin too much. It's the same procedure again. Create a new curves layer and make the curves icon the selected part of the layer. Double click the white point sampling icon and click on the correct skin tone near the area we're going to fix. Then press OK in the color picker dialog box. Click Yes to save the target colors as defaults. Click the area we need to fix and notice that the entire image now has a color cast applied to it. Invert the mask of the current curves layer and then select a soft brush. Set the opacity and flow values for the brush and fill in the problem area. We're probably going to end up brushing the shirt as well as the skin, but don't worry about it. Once you're satisfied with the new color, let's blur out the mask to make the color transition smoother, and then with a harder brush, we'll mask out the color from the shirt areas that have become contaminated. We'll repeat the procedure for the forehead area. Create a new curves layer. Select the curves icon in the new layer. Double click the white point sampling icon and then click a color of skin you like. I'm choosing the color in the cheek area as my source color. Click OK in the color picker dialog and click yes to accept the new default colors. Next, click on the problem area. For me, it's the forehead color. Invert the mask and ensure the mask is now selected. Next, choose a soft brush with 40% opacity and 25% flow and brush in the color. When satisfied, add some blur to the mask. If the overall amount of the brushed in color is too much, we can always lessen the effect by changing the layer's opacity value. Finally, let's group the two adjacent layers and name the group. We'll toggle the visibility of the group to see the before and after. You'll find this procedure works well with any kind of skin tone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. To learn more about Valley Photo Workshops, I hope you'll visit the site valleyphotoworkshops.com. Thanks for watching.